Okay, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi syrahli sadri wa yassirli amri. Wahlul uqdata min lisan yafqahu qawli. Subhanaka la alma lana illa ma'lam tana inna kanta al-alimul hakim. Rabbi zidna ilma. Rabbi zidna ilma. Rabbi zidna ilma. Um, as I have been introduced just now by the moderator, uh, my name is Arifah Fasha. You can either call me Arifah or some uh, of my friends called me Fasha. Okay, and <clears throat> can call me Fasha as well because it's like a uh, nama glamour kan? So ada artis kan nama Fasha. So you can call me Fasha as well. I'm from FSKM, um, YATM Cawangan Perlis. So I'm going to share with you a bit on my experience, uh, on tips on writing and designing ebook. And today, inshallah, it will be like a little bit on the surface because um, we cannot go in depth so much because there's a lot of things that I want to share. <clears throat> but later, if we have uh, another uh, opportunity, if I have another opportunity, I will share uh, in depth for some of the topics that uh, I've shared today, inshallah. All right, so we'll go on with what is an ebook first. I know uh, all of you might have. Um, the knowledge of what is an e-book, but um, by the way, I will share it with you anyway, inshallah. So um, nowadays, as uh, Generation Z, uh, it's more um, experience or influence with digital um, tools and digital media. So e-book, or call it as an electronic e-book, electronic e-book. Is a piece of uh, non-editable text that has been transformed into digital format for tablets, smartphones, or uh, laptops. And maybe some of you have even owned a Kindle, uh, especially for those who really likes to um, read storybooks and so on. And ebooks is not editable, unlike other literature that might uh, have maybe viewed on a tablet. It is being done for the author's security and protection. So just like my own ebooks, it is on a PDF platform where um, the PDF files uh, is protected, where it has password and you have to download in from certain platform only. And you cannot simply, even uh, you have download the ebook, you cannot simply print the ebook okay, because it's too... Uh, Keep the authorship and the content of the ebook safe. Okay. Okay, now, why are we moving toward ebooks? So, when we look at past uh, last two years, we have had MCO and we have uh, done online um, teaching and so on. We have online learning. So, we are looking uh, about moving to full ebooks right now, right? Uh, as uh, we have sent um, our materials online to our students, right? And we have to do distance uh, online learning as well. So we can see that we're really moving toward ebooks nowadays. And besides that, uh, ebooks are portable and lightweight. So we don't have bulky bags anymore. You can uh, carry around a lot of books uh, in your laptop and handphones and even in your Kindle or your uh, other means of uh, digital device. And as you know that we have uh, laptops and uh, phones that are having storage capacity until two terabytes or more than that. So there are a lot of things, especially e-books that you can save on your handphones and on your laptop. And we're also trying to save uh, the earth as well. So uh, trying to be environmentally friendly. Uh, as you know, uh, some of the emails that come towards us, it will say that uh, please don't print these emails unless it is really, really important, isn't it? So <clears throat> it shows that we are really trying to uh, be environmentally friendly as well and we are trying to save the earth. And why the next one is it's unperishable by time in terms of physical and content. So for old books, you can see that uh, it has tarnished. Some of the pages are tarnished. Okay, some of the content as well, because um, books, hard copy books, um, takes a lot of time to publish. And it's also sometimes, uh, it's not easy for us to update the content. But if for ebooks, it's easy for us um, to simply update our content and we can convert it into ebooks, uh, like in the blink of an eye, like we say uh, that way. Lah, okay? <clears throat> so it's easier for us uh, to uh, update our ebooks. 
um, to keep it current. Okay. And of course, I uh, like just what I said just now, uh, our new generation really love to view their materials uh, on their handphones or on their laptop as well. Now, um, who inspires me to start writing? Actually, after completing my degree, I applied for a research assistant at ATMA, UKM. Uh, we call it as Institute Alam dan Tamadun Melayu. How I can go to Institute Alam dan Tamadun Melayu ni? Uh, because uh, my previous work for my final project uh, attached with this um, institute. Okay. This particular uh, lecturer keeps on asking me to write. But at that time, I have no idea what to write on. Right? Because I just graduated, I'm a fresh graduate, I have no idea what I can write. But she keeps on pushing, saying that um, <clears throat> you have to write, you have to write Arifa, write something, Arifa, write something. So, uh, Prof. Uh, Noria Muhammad, she's a professor of Malay language and Malay culture. She is the one who uh, inspires me to start writing, even though I start a bit late. But then uh, I still feel that the push factor is from her, actually. And uh, when I listen to her talk, it's really uh, inspiring because uh, she uses many classic Malay words. For example, after um, the program, she will say, Saya uh, mohon maaf kalau ada salah dan silap, jika ada terselio kata, terkhilaf bicara. So those words that really interesting, isn't it? So I'm so interested with the words that she chose for her um, talks. Okay, uh, and then uh, when she said to me, Arifa, right? Just anything. I just went blank. Like anything. What? What's anything? Like I don't understand, isn't it? But now uh, I do understand what she meant. We can write anything that we desire. We can write anything that we are passionate on. Okay? And on this right hand side is Prof Noria Muhammad. Uh, this is her latest works memoir uh, on Noria Muhammad. Jangan uh, pening sambal lombo. She is actually from Java Heritage, and she's very proud of it. And I'm so happy to see her. Uh, she's still uh, healthy now. Okay, when did I start writing ebooks? It's actually on 2020 uh, and early 2021. Uh, it, is, it triggered when a friend of mine presented me with her ebook, which is not on academic writing. <clears throat> it's like a motivational books, ebooks for students. <clears throat> and it's really. Um, triggers me, which uh, I start thinking back what uh, Prof. Nori has said, uh, you, you can uh, start writing on anything. So uh, now I think like, oh, I can even write an ebook on motivation or on my own uh, life or my experience, right? Not just on academic writing because of course, as lecturers, we have write a lot of um, papers or articles for conferences, for journals, right? Or for chapters in books and so on. But we can also venture into other topics as well. Okay? So it's not just um, being in our uh, circles only. It can be out of other uh, circles as well. Okay, so on October 2021, I started writing and published an ebook at the first time. I asked her to check on my ebook first, and Alhamdulillah, uh, by the end of 2021, I have managed to come up with 11 ebooks. Um, actually, I just started um, working last year on March uh, after my study leave. So uh, I'm really pumped up to write after uh, completing my thesis. I guess that's the push factor as well. Okay. And then on July 2022, this year, uh, I have an ebook that has been published on my experience during my PhD studies. It's an anecdotes. It's my first time writing an anecdotes as well. So it's really out of my comfort zone, but I'm really enjoying the process. And for the coming years, inshallah, my next dream is to publish an ebook in the form of poetry. Uh, I have attended a poetry writing workshop two weeks ago, even though I'm in computer, but I still have some sort of a dream to write a poetry because during uh, childhood, I have involved with storytelling and um, declamasi puisi, declamasi saja. So I think I still have that a niche 
interest in me. So that's why uh, I started um, joining a workshop on poetry writing. Okay. Okay, so this is the first um, poetry that I have joined uh, with um, UITM Kedah branch. Um, so this uh, Voice of the Soul, a compilation of poems uh, that I've joined uh, writing um, one of the poems in the book. Right? I'm just sharing my ebook, so uh, just like to give you some uh, inspired to inspire you a bit. On writing, so this is my latest ebook, which is on anecdotes. Uh, my first time at publishing an anecdote. Um, the title is "Aku Hamba Mu Yang Jahil: Ceritan Pengalaman PhD." So it's all about my PhD journey, um, um, and I've written all in this ebook, and I hope I can share it with those who are pursuing for PhD or planning to pursue for PhD or those. Who Completed PhD. Maybe our experience uh, differs, but then it's really interesting to know other people's um, journey as well. Okay, uh, I have ebook design tips as well. This is um, my first attempt to publish a book in design tips. Uh, tips in designing an awesome ebook from the perspective of a multimedia designer, as I'm in the multimedia design. Area. So I think I might come up with a multimedia um, field as well as an So I um, write this book on tips in designing an awesome ebook. Okay. I, uh, this is my attempt to write in uh, with uh, the author. This is um, Prof. Kute. Uh, she is a pensioner now. Uh, Prof. Kute's aunt. She is from um, Unimed. Previously, she is in UTM, but now she's moved. And then she moved to Unimap, and now she's a pensioner. And we have um, started our own books as well. This is an anecdote on her life. And I also have guided her in writing ebooks as well. Okay, uh, and others, uh, these are the ebooks in Asma Ul Husna uh, because my PhD context is on Asma Ul Husna, which is uh, the uh, 99 names of Allah and the characteristics of Allah. For example, um, if I said, if I said, Al-Alim means that Allah uh, is uh, the one with the knowledge. Okay, that's why um, in my class, I'll share with my students. Uh, before we start our class, we will recite, Ya Allah, Ya Alim, Ya Hakim, Ya Rashid. Ya Allah, Ya Alim, the knowledgeable. Ya Hakim, Ya Rashid. Okay. Um, Please grant us knowledge. So uh, I will just share with them a bit on Asma Husna. So I have some books on Asma Husna, Mengubat Hati, for Stress, Doa for those who are sick, Untuk Penyakit Hati, and for students and teachers as well. And I have a books in Asma Husna on uh, the introduction to Asma Husna, the name, the meaning, and... Okay, and uh, how to recite some Asma Husna for our daily life. Then Asma Husna for anak-anak soleh and solehah. Then doa harian for Asma Husna. For example, if we are cooking, what Asma Husna we can uh, recite? Or when we are um, doing laundry, what are the Asma Husna we can recite? And we have Asma Husna for parents as well. So uh, these are my um really where my happiness lies lah okay uh, this is my pride and joy inshallah uh, may allah bless all of us and at least when i left this world i have something to share with the next generation inshallah okay so we are moving on to the six steps in writing and publishing ebooks um firstly of course you need to select your niche and brainstorm your ideas. I hope that um, everybody can like, uh, select uh, the niche that you have uh, desire or passionate to write on. Okay, and then you can just start brainstorming. Maybe you can start with your friend or you can just jot down uh, your outline. Okay, what, um, what are the content that you want to write in your ebook? Okay, 
And then why write based on your outline? Okay. For me, uh, an outline is really important. Just like when we uh, write thesis, we have chapter one, two, three, four, five, isn't it? So same as ebooks, we have this outline that we have to follow on. Okay. Uh, select a suitable format for the ebook. Okay, so usually uh, it's in PDF. And there are also uh, certain uh, rules that you have to um, uh, follow. For example, the size of the ebook uh, that you have to set it on. Uh, you cannot write on uh, uh, sensitive topics and so on. Okay, after that, uh, you can register for EISBN and PDP. Uh, which is the PIN and M cataloging or Pustakaan Negara Malaysia cataloging. And finally, you can publish your ebooks on a web platform. This, um, to publish, it depends on you. Either you want to create your own uh, websites and share it with your friend, or you can also hire uh, websites um, to publish your books in and so on. So that depends on you, your selection. Okay, so we have tools to write ebooks. So these are uh, the examples of tools that you can use to write ebooks. Either you can use Word, Microsoft Word, or you can use a publisher, or you can use PowerPoint, and you can also use Canva. So if you don't want, if you are, um, you have skills, better skills in using Word. Other than other uh, software, why don't you just use Word? So just choose the one that you are comfortable with because you don't want to like, tire, tire yourself on, oh, I'm so tired thinking about the content, now I'm so tired thinking about how to write it down. So just use any tools that you are comfortable with. So uh, we have, kalau dulu dulu, masa sekolah dulu, I have been involved with, um, school magazine, so we have to use publisher at that time, <clears throat> okay, and that, of course, it's printed lah, at that time, was long ago, okay, and uh, nowadays, the most uh, popular uh, tools that you can use is Canva, but if you don't know how to use Canva, then you can use PowerPoint as well, it's really easy to set the setting and so on, okay, um, so um, what is my choice? So my choice, uh, what I've done is this to either uh, I use um, PowerPoint or I use Canva. And uh, this step, I have used both. And I can compare within uh, these two tools, which are the simplest or a little bit tiring to learn, but then it has the pro and cons. Okay, it has uh, some pro and cons. So for us, usually we are more comfortable with PowerPoints. So you can use PowerPoint as well. <coughs> Sorry. And for those who have used Canva, you can also design your ebook using Canva. Okay. I have um, used PowerPoint for 11 of my ebook. And then I try to venture using Canva. So my latest ebook is using Canva. And <coughs> the easiest way of yeah, the pro and cons lah. Macam PowerPoint ni, uh, it's easy for us to do um, the pages. In Color Canva, we have to do it one by one. But for PowerPoints, of course, it's automatically done for you. So there's some pro and cons there. So for PowerPoint, I have uh, created this book. Uh, 11 of my ebooks using PowerPoint is easier for us. We are more um, custom accustomed to using PowerPoints, so I've used PowerPoint as well. Uh, you can design it accordingly. Um, maybe my topic on a small snack is I use more on uh, cartoons. And of course, if you create, the, if you use or uh, find search for images, you have to make sure that it's not a copyright uh, pictures. If not, um, I don't, I really don't want to get into trouble. So try to find any pictures uh, that is not copyrighted or is free. Um, we have a lot of public uh, domains online where you can uh, find the pictures or you can also uh, use your own pictures as well. That would be better. 
this is using PowerPoint. And this is when I use Canva. Okay, this is uh, the latest ebook that I use Canva. Um, Canva for me is a little bit tiring, but still, uh, maybe for those who are really accustomed to using Canva, it might, it might be a little bit easy for you, right? But uh, the good thing about Canva is that it has a lot of templates. Um, for pictures that you can put, uh, you can use. It, it will be become a little bit nicer uh, because of the templates that it is already built in. So that's uh, the pro of Canva. Okay. okay, so what is the outline for your ebook? So this is basically what I have for my ebook. So firstly, of course, we have book cover. Okay, and then we have a title cover, and we need to have copyright page, and then a disclaimer, appreciation, a TOC or table of content, introduction, and then the content of our ebook, conclusion, and finally we need to have reference. So, uh, <coughs> mungkin nampak macam banyak, tapi sebenarnya is just um, one page, okay, that term title cover, one page, copyright, just one page, disclaimer, just one page, appreciation, maybe if you want to write um, one page or two, then it's okay. okay. Of course, we have introduction, content, and conclusion. Um, of course, it's the main um, pages that you want to focus on. You can also insert uh, your bio data as well uh, in your ebook. I have inside mine, um, short one, uh, just to explain to uh, the reader who I am, what's my interest in, and so on. So you can uh, maybe make this as the guideline okay, for the outline of your ebook. Okay. Uh, the most important thing for us after we have done uh, creating our ebooks, okay, uh, we have to submit for EISBN and PDP. Okay, why? Because we want to uh, register our ebooks in Prime, isn't it? So we need to have EISBN. It's really important for us to finish up, complete a whole book before we submit for EISBN, because you have to submit. <coughs> certain pages of the books so that you will uh, receive your EISBN. For example, you have to submit for your cover. Okay? So you have to submit, submit uh, cover, book cover, title cover, uh, copyright, uh, TOC, um, and uh, a bit of the introduction and a reference. Okay. So some of uh, the outline here you have to submit to um, to get your EISBN and PDP. So this is the page for you to submit or apply for EISBN and PDP, which is depository.pnm.gov.my. Okay. This is um, repository for Pustakaan Negara Malaysia. So what you need to do first is that you have to register for this uh, depository website, a daftar account. Okay, um, saya tak tunjuk lah um, step by step daftar account ni ada apa dekat dalam kan. Eh? Then I'll just show, uh, I'll share with you uh, what's inside and which one that you have to do. Okay. <coughs> So step two, apply for EISBN. So perkhidmatan mohon EISBN is here. Afterwards, uh, you have to apply for PDP. Okay, perkhidmatan mohon PDP. Okay, and uh, you can check uh, step four. You can check for your application status here. Okay, maybe if you have another opportunity, I will share with you step by step what we have in registration what you have to send, uh, what information you have to uh, include in your registration, okay, what 
or the pages that you need to submit for your SBN and PDP. <coughs> and then uh, these are the list of EISBN applications. You can check your list of EISBN applications after you have uh, submit uh, for the application. Okay. It takes around, at first, masa saya mula-mula hantar, it just like around two weeks. But after that, uh, it takes around one month to two months. Okay. Maybe uh, um, lot, a lot of uh, people are writing and applying for EISBN, so I think that's why uh, it takes uh, a little bit of time um, on uh, getting your EISBN and PDP status. Ada soalan ko? Buat saya dengar macam ada tulis kan di sini. Okay, the link you can write. Okay. Right. Right, so um, this is the list of ESPN applications that you can check. Either uh, is it lulus or gagal. Um, and uh, you will be given untuk EISBN. Um, finally, you have to upload actually the book. Lepas dah terima the EISBN and PDP, you have to upload back your ebook, right? So this is what you will get. Uh, the EISBN and PDP. PDP, PDP here is uh, pengkatalogan dalam penerbitan. Okay, so for example, you have here. Um, the name of our book and then mode of access of course internet because you are uh, um, writing an ebook and then this is the EISBN that you will get okay, and then the, the um, category of our ebooks so this one is anecdotes okay um, and then you will get this um, barcode as well okay so you can put it on your books Inshallah, I will show you the example where did I put this PDP and the barcode afterwards. Okay, and you will also get this one. Okay, perakuan identity penerbit because I have, um, said the habis guna, the first ID, so I have another one, ID penerbit. And I have registered on... 20th November 2021 last year. Okay, um, this is um, actually generated for you automatically, so you can just download it from the depository um, website uh, using your accounts. Okay, <coughs> uh, moderator, saya nak minta izin untuk break sekejap boleh ke dalam 2 minit? Boleh, boleh. Uh, sebab saya boleh, ni baru, baru lega demam, so suara saya pun a little bit husky sikit kan. So okay. saya minta break sekejap boleh ya. For two minutes or three minutes, then we continue later. Okay, moderator, insyaAllah we can start. Thank you everyone for waiting. Okay, so um actually, uh, <coughs> my talks, uh, um, just completed here sebenarnya but uh, I want to share with you especially for the Muslims um, what I, uh, I really want to share with you is, yeah, is that Rasulullah telah bersabda Qaidul ilma bil kitab ikatlah ilmu dengan menulisnya so sebelum ni macam I don't understand kan what, uh, what should be written or what can I write but after I explore um, and have a look at some of the ebooks uh, that has been published. I know that <clears throat> actually we can write anything that we like, what we are passionate about. And of course, um, my passion uh, for now is that on uh, Asma Ul Husna, um, this one because I am really into um, studying um, and sharing about Asma Ul Husna nowadays. Um, so I think I don't have any other way to share except um, I write in ebooks. books um, 
And my next plan is to write on poetry, inshallah. Um, so I hope that uh, please uh, uh, wish me luck and pray for me so that uh, I can still write more. Uh, I have a lot of outline that I have written. Um, I've set folders. So now I can say about folder, folder atau dalam uh, Windows saya ni. <coughs> dalam Windows Explorer ni, I have uh, folders. What are the titles of the topics of the ebooks that I want to write? So bila kita nampak balik, oh, this is what I want to write. Next. So at least I have um, the topics or the titles that I want to uh, write uh, for the next time, inshallah. Okay. And so um, thank you everyone. This is actually um, the page that I have uh, published my ebooks on. Um, this is on bicarahati.org. Okay. Um, maybe you can, uh, some of uh, my friends has written their own ebooks and they publish it on their own websites. They manage it on their own, but for me, I have my own uh, ebooks shop ebook store that I have placed all my ebooks uh, in. Okay, uh, I promise to show you my ebook just now yang kat mana saya letak this one, isn't it? So I will share it with you. Sekejap eh, saya pilih satu buku. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, so uh, yang ni yang saya cakap. Tadilah kan, uh, I have done uh, folders, uh, what are the ebooks that I want to write, okay, so I put it in folders like this. So, uh, kan semua yang saya dah tulis dekat sini, tapi saya tulis setiap folder dekat sini supaya saya ada idea for what, um, what is the next book that I want to write on, okay. So I have it like this. Maybe, um, maybe other um, it will inspire you to do it this way, or maybe you can uh, do it on your uh, on your own way, right? I'll share with you this one. So, um, saya akan tunjuk macam mana kita dapat ISBN tu kan? So it's in. Um, dia akan bagi dalam bentuk PDF. Okay, macam ni. Okay. You will receive uh, this PDF by PDP dekat dalam um, website PNM tadi. In the depository, you will get it this way and you can paste it uh, on your ebooks. Okay, and the and the barcode as well. I will show you the barcode. Okay, so this is the barcode that you receive in PDF as well. So you can just uh, print screen and paste it on your ebook. Okay, I will show my ebook. Right, this is uh, the one with um, the anecdotes. Right, so you have the cover page and then the title page and then copyright. So this is where you put your PDP. Okay. Right, this is the disclaimer. Okay. Okay, and my bio data. And Kandungan, kenalan, <coughs> and at the back, you can put this barcode. Barcode so at the back of your ebook. Okay. Ada orang yang buat ebook tak ambil pun di ISBN, but um, bagi saya um, rugi lah kan. <coughs> As a writer, you want to um, have the authorship and you want to um, publish our books correctly 
and can uh, dengan sempurna lah kan we say um, and we can um, register it as uh, our publication as well for prime so apa salahnya we take some time to uh, apply for ESB and NPDP okay, barulah rasa macam puas hati lah it's like a self satisfaction as well isn't it a complete a completed ebooks with ESB and NPDP kita akan rasa seronok lah dan taklah kita seronok sebab kita tulis apa yang kita suka and then kita complete kan dengan EIS dan PDP pula so it's like uh, memang self satisfaction lah untuk saya kan self satisfaction so seronok sebab dapat share with our friends our ebooks um, our life uh, our experience and then uh, the additional part we can uh, register for Prime kan uh, memang seronok lah Okay, so there's uh, some of question here. Oh, sekejap eh, saya tengok. Mana itu saya jawab soalan eh, boleh eh? Uh, so, uh, I think we can answer the question after uh, finish all the presentation. Can okay. doctor? We, we, we encourage them to ask in the chat box mm -hmm. then later after your presentation uh your doctor presentation then we will continue with the question and answer is it okay doctor like that yeah sure no problem <laughs> okay, thank you. Right. maybe right. ask the question first lah on the chat box then i will read for, for you doctor right. okay thank you all right so uh this is the examples of uh, my uh, ebook okay and this is my own page lah uh, for publishing my ebooks okay, this is my web platform <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Um. Maybe I uh, will go to a depository page, and then uh, I can show you the live view, uh, how it looks like. Okay. Because I think it's the most crucial part for your um. Writing lah kan, uh, yang lain mungkin uh, senang je nak menulis je kan uh, InsyaAllah, everybody has uh, their own creativity, their own knowledge uh, Their own content that they want to write But then, um, <coughs> registering for PDP and ESBN is the part, uh, the most crucial part And of course, uh, you need to know and design the ebooks as well But then, you can learn that as well Okay, sekejap eh, saya share Okay, so this is uh, the depository page, depository.pnm.gov.my. So, <clears throat> uh, for the first time, you have to uh, register for your account. Okay. Um, I just log in because I already have uh, my accounts here. Okay, so uh, here, it's, this is the page where I said that you can apply for EISBN. Okay, uh, so now, nowadays, it takes around, um, ada tak dia tulis kat sini? Oh, tak ada. Mungkin around one month. Okay, nowadays, maybe around one month. And after you have received um, your PDP and ESB barcode, you have to upload. Yang ni, <laughs> this is my bad because I haven't checked. Um, <coughs> this page so saya dapat surat peringatan sebab saya tak upload the ebooks online so um, surat peringatan ni pun uh, kena berhati-hati jugalah kan takut juga nanti kan um, if you are, if um, our uh, apa penerbitan ni uh, stop ataupun macam mana okay hey, this one dia akan cakap sistem depository telah menyekat permohonan uh, The National Standard Serial Number, ISSN dan seterusnya Mandangkan tuan puan masih gagal mematuhi Akta 331 Which is, we have to upload our ebook Itu um, uh, salah saya lah masa ni Because uh, saya terlepas pandang tak upload But then uh, after we have uh, submit the ebooks then uh, it's okay lah right. So just peringatan lah bila you hantar nanti kan okay, Bukan semua, uh, kalau tengok semua kat sini lulus isn't it? Not all um, lose at the first time because um, 
belajar-belajar buat kan belajar-belajar apply so ada yang gagal kat sini okay. uh, kenapa because um, it takes like um, a um, little bit of time to understand what we need to upload what we need to share okay what we need to do actually so um, adalah pengalaman-pengalaman kegagalan dia sini kan bila memohon tu but it's okay never mind life is a journey of learning isn't it and life <coughs> learning so <coughs> lepas tu kita buat pembaikan and then of course alhamdulillah we um, managed to get uh, kelulusan alhamdulillah So you see here, I applied my first application for USBN and PDP is on uh, October 2021. Ini saya cakap tadi, uh, saya mula menulis uh, bulan 10, bulan 10, 2020, satu bulan siap. Okay. So, um, sebab saya tak ada memohon yang baru, <coughs> But then, uh, we will start apply lah. Okay. Tapi saya tak boleh apply ni, kena masih kena block lagi. Okay. But here, you can click on mohon uh, SPN. Hmm, sorry, I cannot apply. Sebab saya ada, uh, ni, anda mempunyai judul yang sudah melepasi tarikh jangka terbit. Mohonan hanya boleh lakukan sekian judul tersebut sudah didepositkan. So, I'm still waiting um, for this uh, untuk dapat kelulusan baru saya boleh mohon new EISBN. So, uh, it's like pelajaran lah kan sama-sama. So, at least you know that after a month lepas saja dapat kelulusan untuk EISBN dengan bakut ni mesti kena terus upload your ebook. Kalau tak jadi macam saya, kena sekat. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> so, I'm sorry I cannot show you how to apply for EISBN currently. But you can explore later, inshallah. Okay. Hmm. So, yang tadi ESBN and then PDP here. Pun sama juga. Okay. And ni uh, ESBN. So, you can uh, download your barcode. So it will give you a code here and this one you can uh, download your PDP. Check okay. the PDP. So you will have this one. Okay. Ini lah saya rasa yang uh, most important part uh, for us as a writer. Okay, setakat dulu saya rasa untuk <coughs> sharing, maybe I can answer question now, moderator, cukup dah kot. InsyaAllah. <coughs> okay, Dr. Uh, thank you, Dr. Arifa Fasha for the such an insightful knowledge sharing session. Okay. Uh, for your information, for the audience information, uh, ebook publication is also counted as an ebook publication as long as it has the ISBN registered with recognized publisher and appropriate uh, registered and verified with the prime system. Okay, uh, Doctor, so, uh, we shall continue with the. Uh, before that, mm -hmm. can we um, we continue with the question and answer first? After the question and answer, uh, I need to take a phot group photograph, uh, group photograph, and we continue with the question and answer first. So we see the question. So uh, there are a lot of question asking, asking doctor. <laughs> so okay, for the first one, um, doctor, how you uh, how do you determine the price? Uh, the price. I think it's uh, the ebook price for from my understanding. Uh, yeah. And which pro, uh, which platform that you put for the to be sold, and how you set the password? Maybe they want to how they. Hmm. Okay, thank you. All right. Um. So, inshallah, I will try to answer it as best as I could. Um. How do you determine the price? Okay. Uh, it's according to um the the pages 
um, the pages of the ebooks, of course. And ebooks is not usually um, very pricey, especially when I'm an amateur. So I'm a amateur, kan? Amateur. So <laughs> I don't put uh, really high prices because I really want to share the uh, information, uh, share the teachings. So um, maybe if you do uh, an academic books, then you can set uh, the bar uh, looking at the other pricing. Okay. Uh, I think that's uh, one of the answers that I can give you. Uh, which platform? So I have, um, this is actually a, a paid platform, a MSGA platform, which I have um, uh, my own ebook store. Um, Sebab saya ni tak rajin walaupun on computer kan. Uh, so saya tak rajin nak manage my own website. So I put it uh, on um, <coughs> uh, a paid um, platform which is um, from uh, MSTA. And how do you set the password? So everything is done for me when I upload it on my um, platform. Um, the uh, the password, the security um, and the functions for not provided to be printed dibuat oleh that platform ok so, uh, saya ni tak rajin orang yang sejuta sesia <laughs> tak rajin, saya rajin menulis je but at the back end, I am not that hardworking uh, to set so I have chosen a platform that um, I want to use ok meaning that the, the platform help you on the security part lah yes, it right? helps me on the platform to sell, sell the ebooks and then on the security part yes, correct Okay, maybe, um, maybe I can share the uh, uh, link uh, share my website here, moderator. Uh, can sure. Uh, the website is it? Yeah. Uh, sure. You just put on the uh, chat box so people can be on that. Hmm. Um, I will share and show show the website um, as well. Maybe um. Sebagai just contoh lah kan, maybe you can choose any other platform but it doesn't mind. It's just what I choose from. So this is my website, uh, my ebook store. And this are the list of ebooks that I have here. And the pricing as well. And you can purchase from this website. Okay. So, uh, so the audience can try to see then... Uh, because we can learn from the other people works also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my choice of platform. So maybe if you want to do your own platform, then it doesn't matter, right? But mm -hmm. this is uh, where I put my ebooks on and it's easier for me. So I choose this platform. Uh, certain uh, person, so this is like our integrity, our integrity, to make sure that our integrity, to make sure that our books, published books, uh, correctly written and in good uh, language and so on. So meaning that you have a team also to write right? <laughs> to, to have the editor. <laughs> I have friends actually that helps me with this. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so we go to the second question from Professor Madia Dr. Nosa Slinda Kamaludin. Uh, is there any limit uh, any limit for minimum pages number uh, and also the any verifier of the content? Okay, thank you so much, uh, PM Dr. Naslinda. So, limit for minimum page, yes. Um, for us to get PDP and ISBN, it must be more than 35 pages. 40, uh, 35 to 40 pages. But I guess it will be more. Sebab apa? Sebab kita tak sabar nak tulis apa yang kita nak curahkan kan? <laughs> from our heart kan? From the bottom of our heart. So, usually I write down mungkin dalam 65 pages macam tu but it must be more than 35 if, if I'm not mistaken you can read it on BNM dia ada, dalam BNM tu dia ada list guidelines uh, what are the minimum uh, pages for you to receive your EISBN and any verify of the content yes, I have my own uh, friends that check it for me for Asmosna, I have Ustaz and Ustazah that check for me and for other um for other for my tips on writing ebooks pun saya ada uh, a friend of mine yang bekerja dalam bidang software and software development so he is the one who check for me and and yeah this lah so, so of course we need to have a verifier so meaning that uh, the verifier uh, they not not stopo uh, not uh, macam contohnya uh, tidak semestinya seorang yang uh, kena ada sijil apa semua untuk 
dia hantar pergi SDM ke macam mana doktor? So, uh, maksud uh, untuk pembunuhan SDM ni dia tak tanya pun kita oh, tak, tak tanya tak tanya pun hmm. tapi kita sendiri yang kita rasa integriti lah kan, ya. kan uh, obligation lah kan hmm. uh, kita okay. buat so we go to the next question uh, from Dr. Huda uh, what time do you usually write? Yeah. Uh, what time I usually write? Yeah, saya suka I really like to uh, write um, in the morning early in the morning lah okay. dan uh, memang selalunya di uh, penulis-penulis yang saya tanya okay, uh, mereka menulis di waktu waktu subuh, sebelum subuh, waktu tahajud uh, kan bila saya tanya uh, penulis puisi yang saya join bengkel hari tu um, <coughs> the coach also write down her poems during uh, tahajud time 4 to 5 pm uh, macam tu so, so masa time tu fresh ok doctor, so we go to the next question from <laughs> Valerie Chan <coughs> Abdullah Uh, do you have a registered uh, register a company to become a penerbit individu or uh, orang perseorangan? Okay, um, actually I I have I don't have any company so I did um, register it under my own name penerbit individu yes so under my own name I'm the penerbit. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we go to the, sec- the next question. Uh, Oh, so I think this is the same question uh, from the above because uh, macam mana nak jadikan e-book itu hanya yang boleh beli uh, saja boleh buka yeah. but uh, doktor gunakan platform yang doktor bagi tahu tadi yes. okay, so, so the next question is uh, minimum uh, or maximum pages pun doktor dah bagi tahu. Yeah. okay so uh, the next question from doktor Nur Hasniza uh, boleh ibu ni akan dikira sebagai ma- MYATP ya uh, ya yeah, yeah. ah yes because uh, when uh, when we have EISBN for our ebooks then uh, you can register for prime for my app macam saya tengok hari tu my app memang dia automatically masuk uh, my ebooks oh so, prime so, tu my app okey sorry boleh tanya it's okay <laughs> Because I'm a student, so I'm having oh, with yeah. Javi, so, so. Okay. Okay. Right. so the next one is uh, Okay, uh, from Dr. Suhana uh, What is the current trend on feeding, especially on e-book? Uh. Uh, current trend? Current trend, do you mean like the topics? I think it's more to the topics, yeah okay. I think it's more to the topics, yeah Hmm. Kalau betul-betul lah kan uh, trends on ebook selalu mm, remaja if you want really want a lot of readers remaja teenagers or students um, unfortunately um, romantic novels are very popular okay, tapi saya bukan penulis uh, novel cinta-cinta ni saya tak minat but that is the current trend actually okay, uh, kalau puan uh, doktor kalau Dr. Suhana pandai menulis uh, storybooks um, maybe tulis buku uh, romantik tapi yang islamik lah you can do some tarbiah kan for this um, uh, teenagers so that would be really really good uh, insyaAllah that's from my uh, my own opinion and my own perspective lah okay. uh, before I before I forget uh, give me a moment lah Dr. Ya Uh, before I forgot, okay. I share uh, uh, attendance uh, for each certificate first. <laughs> so uh, hopefully, I, uh, the audience can help to fill in the each certificate attendance. Okay, so we go to the next question uh, from Nur Azira. Uh, berapa lama ibu sini akan masuk dalam sistem OPEX setelah dapat ISBN? Okay, ha, ini soalan yang sangat menarik sebab saya dah tanya librarian last year unfortunately all my minta maaf kat sini dah ada librarian tu because uh, my, sebelas buku saya yang saya publish last year tak dapat masuk um, prime sebab apa it takes around uh, librarian beritahu it takes around 6 months uh, to get your ebooks dalam sistem OPEC okay? uh, sebab buku yang baru ni saya tulis bulan enam Uh, tapi dah dapat masuk prime tapi mungkin uh, it's still waiting untuk masuk OPEC lah kan masih pandu bulan 6 eh? ah, ya, 6 saya rasa macam tu 
So um, apa yang saya dah terima daripada um, librarian untuk masuk OPEC memerlukan masa enam bulan. Okay, kalau dah berubah saya minta maaf, saya tak sure tapi yang saya tanya last year enam bulan. Okay. okay, so we go to the next question from uh, Professor Dr. Vera Padian. Uh, Okay, how much do you, uh, how much do we need to pay online bookstore to upload mm. our e-books? Means that the platform dot. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, actually, saya tak. Ah, uh, mana? Should I promote or not? I don't. I'm not so sure because uh, saya tak ada commission ni, tuh ya. I'm just joking. But um, um, untuk permulaan for the start, yeah, macam around kalau saya buat yang macam um, unlimited e-books sebab saya plan jangka masa panjang so dia ada banyak um, pilihan ada boleh upload dalam beberapa e-book saja dan harganya lebih murah tapi saya choose uh, I choose uh, to publish uh, unlimited e-books on this platform so at the first time I have to pay around 1000 macam terkejut lah kan but um, itulah uh, sebab kita minat kan so um, and then for yearly kita kena bayar empat ratus ringgit macam tu insyaAllah lah kalau uh, we try our best to um, share it with our friends uh, cubalah untuk promote-promote kan hopefully dia boleh um, balik modal insyaAllah uh, for me saya tak saya tak rasa ralat pun untuk bayar sebab apa um, macam seronok lah bagi saya, saya, saya rasa happy sebab saya, saya tak perlu buat apa-apa I don't have to do anything at all, they do it for me and I just uh, focus on writing, that's it uh, kan saya cakap tadi tak berapa rajin kan <laughs> the, the, the team, uh, the platform itself help you that yeah. <laughs> kalau kami nak dengan platform ni mungkin boleh PM saya personally lah sebab hmm. saya tak, mungkin tak sesuai nak cerita kat sini ni okay. Uh, for the next question is from uh, Siti Farida. Uh, are there any difficulties if you want to sell or publish uh, the books on the Google Play books? Okay, yeah. uh, Puan Siti Farida, I'm, uh, I'm so sorry because I haven't tried to publish or sell my book on Google Play books because I have my own platform that I've used and I'm really satisfied with that. Uh, so I, I'm sorry, I, I really cannot answer because I don't know. <laughs> Okay. okay, so next question is uh, kalau dalam uh, from the Madam Suryani uh, kalau dalam MYATP bagaimana nak identify the status of publication as national or internal publication especially mm -hmm. in other publication in MYATP National or internal publications okay. mm -hmm. mm, ada publication in my ATP sebab untuk uh, buku kalau saya tengok dalam my ATP tu dia automatically masuk dah so saya tak perlu buat apa-apa pun it's automatically set ataupun mungkin uh, ah yeah. ya uh, masa kita set dalam prime tu kan kita boleh pilih national ataupun internal atau international so maybe dia set from there kan dia dah buat categorization from there from Uh, the first, um, we set or upload uh, the info in Prime. Uh, sebab saya tengok macam tu lah. Uh, dia dah uh, appear in my ATP automatically. Sebab kita tak boleh, kita tak boleh add kan. Dia uh, pick up from my, uh, from Prime. So, I think that's uh, how you set uh, for national, internet and inter international from uh, Prime. Sure. Ini that in the Prime, uh, they automatically set, is it Dr? Uh, ya. Yeah. Okay. So the last question ada. Hmm. Uh, boleh doktor demo sikit bila kita dah beli buku <laughs> dari oh. bicari hati doa RG tu. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Macam mana nak demo ni? Eh? Boleh ke demo? Saya try ya. Eh. Nah, selalu saya beli kat dalam Telegram. Macam Telegram saya macam ada dah ada sistem Telegram yang membolehkan saya untuk beli buku tu. Kalau yang ni, saya cuba kan. Okay, uh, once you click on the book, contohlah yang ni. <coughs> okay, uh, just buy now. 
Ayan, you can check out. Tapi saya kena sign in lah sebab uh, you have to register for um, you have to register first. Okay, bila dah register nanti baru boleh beli lah. Okay. Uh, nanti dia akan bagi link. Okay, contoh bila kita dah isi semua, kita dah register and then kita dah pay and so on. Uh, dia akan bagi link on your email and then in your uh, SMS as well. Sekejap saya share yang <coughs> yang saya dah beli ya. Senang sikit lah. Nak tunjuk macam mana kan. Tak maaf lah kalau ni email personal saya suka nampak yang tak bersesuaian tu. Uh, buat tak nampak dah lah ya. Okay so dia akan hantar macam ni. Ebook delivery. Bila kita dah isi dekat website uh, platform tadi. Uh, kita akan nampak this one. Dia akan hantar dalam bentuk here. Boleh nampak kan ni? Adakah? Uh, okay. So dia akan hantar dalam ni. Okay. Uh, Ibu password. Okay. Dia akan bagi link. Okay. So you can download from here. Hmm, sekejap share this step. Dia akan keluar. Bila kita klik link tadi untuk download. Kita kena masuklah password kita. Dan submit. Dan barulah kita boleh uh, baca buku dan kita boleh download sebagai PDF. But bila kita download dalam PDF pun, mesti kena masukkan password tadi. Okey ke? Rasa okey tu doktor. Ya. Yeah. Hmm, okay. Faham dah. Nampak clear. Means that uh, when we buy uh, from there, then we receive an email. Hmm. Then on the password. I think doktor need to cut off the video. <laughs> 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 Okay, that, so the, I think uh, there is one more question. Uh, I think this is the last question that we can ask uh, from Rosida, Madam Rosida Ahmad, you need. Uh, perlu tak kita check menggunakan sebarang software sama ada topik e kita sama dengan mana-mana e di pasaran ataupun tak kisah walaupun tajuknya sama. Hmm, uh. Okay, good question. Okay, untuk uh, topik uh, title, um, uh, I like to Google, macam kita nak tulis um, journal paper kan, uh, kita nak tulis ni misalnya kita klik kat google sini uh, type that topic kalau ada banyak, then maybe we can alter it a bit, isn't it? tapi um, content dia sama lagi uh, but then um, kalau topic title dia sama pun tak ada masalah sebab uh, author dia berlainan bila kita nak apply, apply for EISBN, dia tak tanya pun oh, tak macam dalam prime, dalam prime kan nanti dia akan letak Tadi ni 100% sama dengan lain ataupun 50% sama but uh, for AISBN application tak, dia tak tanya pun. But then uh, cuba untuk buat topik uh, ataupun title yang menarik lah insyaAllah kan uh, nak bagi, uh, nak kena catchy sikit lah untuk tarik membaca <coughs> hmm, macam tu. Okay. So okay, uh, I think uh, give me a moment lah. Eh. Okay, so I think that's the all the question. Hmm, we can, I think, give me a moment lah, doctor. It's like a lag there. <laughs> okay. Because uh, I have one question lah, last doctor. Uh, okay. Have you tried the audio book instead of e-book? Audio hmm, book? Um, um, I haven't tried it. Uh, furthermore, mm -hmm. I'm a visual person. Mm -hmm. I'm not an auditory person, <laughs> so uh, just by listening, uh, I cannot really focus. I'm a visual person, so that's why I choose on visual ebooks rather than um, audio ebook. But then, uh, maybe uh, if um, other persons interested with audio ebook, then you can also try it. But unfortunately, I haven't tried yet. Okay. okay. Uh, so once again, thank you for uh, thank you for the sharing session, doctor. Okay, so the next one, uh, I would like to uh, invite all the participants and the audience because I want to take uh, the photographer, the photograph of the audience. All the audience can help to turn on their camera. So I will screenshot the the audience. Okay. Give me a moment. Ah, uh. okay. Can help to turn on your camera. Then I can screenshot. One, two, three, smile. Okay. 
thank you. Next page. Can I go to the next page? Okay. All right. Uh, thank you for your cooperation. Uh, and uh, thank you, doctor, for your sharing session. Uh, once again, thank you for the taking your time, uh, your, uh, making your time to join our webinar, Tips on Writing and Designing eBooks for Perspective of a Busy Lecturer. Okay. Our next webinar uh, is scheduled to be on the next January, uh, entitled as a series webinar Borak Santai Postgraduate Pengalaman PhD, which will be uh, co-organized with UITM Press and RIG, uh, Research Interest Group, uh, Vehicle Inventory and Routing Problem, and Arabic Language Education for the next January. Uh, hope uh, to see you then. Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm sorry if I have any um, Alah silap daripada saya, daripada pihak moderator and also from uh, from the doctor itself. Okay, thank you for making your time with us. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Right. Hope we can see you all again. Thank you. Bye. Uh, thank you so much everyone for listening. Thank you, doctor. For being beneficial for everyone. And the organizer. Thank you. Welcome everyone. Thank you. Welcome.